Some people get home, take off their contact lenses, and flush it down the toilet. But as Fox's Jessica Formoso explains, this seemingly harmless act is contaminating our water. 45 million people in the United States wear contact lenses. I think people should enjoy a clear vision. But there is one issue, the way people dispose of them. I use one a day and then I throw them in the garbage. I flush them. Sometimes you lose one down the sink, yeah, but normally I throw them in the garbage. A new study found that out of the 15 billion lenses being discarded every year in the U.S., Three billion are flushed down the toilet or sink. A concern for scientists who say this may contribute to the problem of microplastic pollution. We have an issue with disposing these contact lenses into the sink or into the toilet and sending them into wastewater, which, which ultimately becomes drinking water and also creates a route for contamination of land through application of sewage sludge. Rolf Halden, professor at Arizona State University and director of the Biodesign Center for Environmental Health Engineering, is one of the researchers. He and his colleagues surveyed 400 people. We wouldn't flush hypodermic needles, would we? Right, so don't do this with your contact lens. Halden says when the lenses make their way to a wastewater treatment facility, they do not biodegrade easily, which is a problem. And they can create something that's known as micro plastics or even nanoplastics. So a single lens can produce thousands if not millions of small fragments. Where do they travel? Do they get into our food, into our drinking water, into our soil? And are we getting exposed to these particles? And uh, what is the chemical load that these, these plastic um, particles can shuttle. Professor Halden says the reason why many people don't know how to properly dispose of their contact lenses is because many of the manufacturers don't put that information on the packaging. Your box, does it say how to properly dispose of them? Mm, I don't think so. You're going to want to check your freezer. Concern over an E. coli outbreak has prompted a massive recall of beef. Cargill Meat Solutions has recalled 132,000 pounds of ground beef. The affected products were packed on June 21st and they'll have the number EST86R printed inside the USDA inspection mark. The Agriculture Department considers this a high-risk situation. One person has already died. 17 have fallen ill. Only a month ago, Cargill recalled 12 and a half tons of ground beef because of the same problem. Destroy it or take it back where you bought it for a full refund. Work is double trouble for college students. People are doubled over with joy at economic news, and Halloween's got parents seeing double at the cost for their kids' costumes. Fox Business Network's David Asman tells us these details in Fox Means Business. College students are spending more time working than studying. According to a report by HSBC, kids spend more than four hours a day on average at their jobs. That's almost double the time they are in class. The big reason? Well, you guessed it, all that student loan debt. A record day on Wall Street, the Dow and the S&P 500 both closing at all-time highs on Thursday. The Nasdaq was also up, but still 1% away from its own record. The rise in stocks helping to push household wealth to a record high of nearly $107 trillion. The Federal Reserve says $800 billion of that money is in stocks and mutual funds. And finally, forget being spooked by ghosts and goblins. The real scare might come when you look in your wallet this Halloween. That's because according to a survey by the company Prosper and Analytics, spending for the holiday will likely hit $9 billion this year. But that's a little less scary than last year when spending hit $9.1 billion. Just remember to save some of your trick-or-treat candy. That's business. I'm David Asman. Well, Wells Fargo is announcing job cuts. The nation's third largest bank says it plans on cutting up to 10% of the workforce over the next three years. Wells Fargo Chief Executive Tim Sloan made the announcement to employees on Thursday. The bank currently employs roughly 265,000 workers. In 2015, the San Francisco-based bank admitted its employees opened millions of fake bank accounts for customers in order to meet unrealistic sales goals. Since then, Wells has admitted to other scandals, including selling auto insurance to borrower, borrowers who didn't need it. Butterball says Hurricane Florence won't affect its Thanksgiving turkey supply. The turkey producer, closely associated with Thanksgiving meals, says much of its North Carolina operations have been halted by Florence. The storm ravaged the eastern portion of the state this week, but no holiday turkey shortages are expected because those birds come from the company's Midwest operations. The News and Observer of Raleigh reported that though the company's headquarters is based in Garner, North Carolina, only ground turkey, turkey bacon, and turkey breast are produced in its home state. 
Butterball has several locations in North Carolina, plus others in Missouri and Arkansas, according to the company's website. Still to come on Fox 14, once the soldiers, trailblazers, and the fight for civil rights, now battling for education and criminal justice reform. And the Food Bank of Northeast Louisiana had a rocking night of volunteering. We'll have the story keep it right here on Fox 14.